now, the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. Childs eludes the first rush, gonna hang it up downfield for Foster in the end zone. It's intercepted! Kind of digest the film and met with the guys. Obviously, you know, moods are down when you put a lot of work in and you're trying to win a game and come up short. I do think the mindset, though, is that every Sunday, win or lose, we're gonna approach the thing, what did we learn? Um, what do we gotta get fixed? Uh, and there was, there was plenty there. This is going to be a very special week here at Michigan State as former football coach Mark D'Antonio is being inducted into the Ring of Honor here at Spartan Stadium prior to the game with Ohio State on Saturday. As for the play on the field, Michigan State is looking to bounce back from a 23-19 loss to Boston College last Saturday, a game in which quarterback Aiden Childs threw three interceptions, and it was all stuff we discussed with current head coach Jonathan Smith prior to his first meeting with the Buckeyes. This is just going to be a knee for Castellanos, and the Eagles will celebrate their third win of the year. There's the snap and there's the touch of the knee. First one doing these coming off a loss, obviously not an ideal for you guys, but what did you like about the response after Saturday's loss to Boston College? Well, you look at a lot of response throughout the game. We got to finish the last whatever four minutes uh, better, but but there was on a tough uh, environment on the road, the momentum swings, bouncing back and forth. There's some good play in there. There's some definitely things we want to clean up, do better. Um, but the approach the next day, guys, we're back to getting some things fixed, know what we got to emphasize, and looking forward to the next week. And yeah, when you went over film, what was maybe the biggest thing that stood out that maybe was frustrating or something that you know that this team is better at that just didn't just happen? Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, on one side of it, offensively, there's some opportunity there. You know, a couple of, you know, guys are open. We missed them. We didn't protect it well enough. We got to get uh, our run game a little bit more, uh, a lot more efficient. Um, but, you know. That's just one thing that stood out on offense. And obviously with Aiden, I know he probably would have loved to have a better performance. What's the approach with him this week of maybe getting his confidence back, or is that not something you have to worry about right now? You know, yeah, you always want to be coaching some confidence, but that comes from demonstrated performance. Confidence does. So what do we want to do? We want to have a great week of work and practice, uh, fixing some things, um, that kind of thing, and also surrounding him, those 10 other guys, coaches included, to make sure we're putting um, – the situations, uh, game plan, and the other 10 guys playing really well around him. It's obviously not ideal to be missing four wide receivers, especially for the quarterback, but what did you just like about maybe the, the group that was out there that maybe helped him have those yeah, nice Yeah, I thought AZ stood out. I mean, he played more and had some huge catches, especially late in the game for us, and so that was a guy uh, that stepped up. Montori has continued to be consistent. He made some plays in the game. Valiant had some nice catches. I think, again, we want to go back to this you know, the run game. We want to find ways to be more productive there. Um, so guys needed to step up, and I thought AZ was an example of that. Did it almost feel like just a domino effect if one wide receiver goes out and then another one? It's like, how do you handle that as a coach? Yeah, it's not ideal at one particular position like that. But again, offensively, you can do some other things. You saw some more tight ends in the game, that kind of thing, and, and guys needed to step up. Do you, in a sense, with, with Aiden and the interception so far this year, how, how do you coach that with him and maybe understanding, like, hey, maybe don't make this throw, maybe it's better to throw out of bounds or something like that? There's a lot. I mean, you know, yeah, decision, technique, accuracy. I think the situations that get created, if we're in third and longs, well, why are we in that situation? Well, we'd go back to the better play on first and second down. There's a lot on it. He's not alone, too. I mean, some of the turnovers can, can be created by protection or lack thereof, route detail. You know, the route's supposed to be at 12 and we're all of a sudden at 15 or we're at 8. All of that leads to, to turnovers. He showed his, his ability to run, too, a lot more in that game. That was impressive, I think, for a lot of people. He's obviously probably had that skill to him, but what did you like about seeing that now unfold in the game? I think he showed a little of his competitiveness, right? You, know, you got back there, he's looking to throw, not there. He goes and goes, finds ways to get first downs. There's a third down and 10 that he made a bunch of guys miss, he cut it back from the sideline. It, kind of shows how competitive he is. Obviously now bouncing back, you get Ohio State this week at home. It seems like they just do everything well. Is that sort of what you guys see as well? Yeah, there's not many flaws you, you do see. I mean, defensively, uh, the scheme's tough. They got good players on the edge of it. They tackle well. They don't misfit. Flip it on offense, can score in a hurry. I and mean, with some of the, you know, the backs, receivers, quarterback, veteran, and accurate with it. Old line makes it physical, good on teams. The return game in particular, coverage units. So. 
there's not a lot of flaws we've seen so far. Before you arrived here, the last coaching staff, the last four years, Ohio State was always that consistent opponent that just always had their way with MSU. How, how do you, in a way, make it where it is competitive for, you know, obviously they're the number three in the country for a reason, they're very good. How do you make it where it is competitive? Yeah, you want to focus on yourself in regards to what we can do uh, to clean up errors. Uh, work toward our strengths, understanding, yeah, it's going to be a good, challenging opponent. We've approached it that way. Um, and again, I don't think we're alone here. Ohio State's been good for a long time, gave, creates issues for a lot of people. Um, but we got an opportunity uh, this Saturday to, to kind of let, let it all hang out and focus on ourselves and playing well. Michigan State does have history of knocking them off. They beat them in the 2013 Big Ten Championship game in 2015 that helped them get to the college football playoff. And Mark D'Antonio was obviously the, the head coach of those teams. He's going into the ring of honor at Spartan Stadium Saturday. How often have you, you been able to maybe lean on him for some advice to have success here? He's been great since I've gotten here, uh, in, whether it's texts, phone calls, conversations, and my slash his office. Uh, so he has been great. He's well-deserved, uh, a legend. Uh, not just of this place, the college football in general. So uh, that'll be that'll be fun to be around that on on this weekend. After chatting with some of the players this week about facing Ohio State, sophomore linebacker Jordan Hall shared with us Smith's message to the team prior to Saturday's game. And Smith told them, "Leave your capes at home. We don't need superheroes out on the field. Just 11 players." doing their job. Kickoff is set for 7.30 on Saturday night here at Spartan Stadium. 